This is the presentation for A Shared Future, Advancing Institutional Goals by Aligning Library, Unit, and Campus Strategic Plans, presented by Alexandra Stark. My name is Alexandra Stark, and I am the e-learning librarian in the Teaching and Learning Programs at UW-Madison. In this position, I provide online learning leadership to set vision and strategy via expertise, services, and tools that position the libraries as a leader in the development of innovative educational practices and online learning. This presentation is based on research in my field and a case study from UW Madison Libraries. This, this is the agenda for my presentation. First, I will present a few of the challenges facing higher education and libraries in America. Then I will discuss the structure of an institutional strategic plan and the reasons why libraries develop plans. Then I'll discuss strategies for aligning a library or department plan to the institutional plan and present the case study of the e-learning plan from the University of Wisconsin-Madison Library. First, I will discuss challenges to higher education in America, but these are also reflective of international changes as well. American higher education has had a declining enrollment since 2012. This is a radical change from the 40 years of consistent increases. Currently, institutions are competing to recruit students and for federal and state funding. There are many factors contributing to this situation, including globalization, change in demographics, and decrease in enrollment. In the last decade, there has been an emergence in the global higher education marketplace due to an increase in liberal arts education offerings in nations that typically did not offer that avenue and global rankings of institutions by research, output, and teaching rather than just national rankings. The competition for international students has increased among nations, and this can be heightened by geopolitics. Applications from international students declined starting in 2016 after the dual impact of the Trump administration's immigration policies and media coverage of school shootings. While applications rose in competing English speaking countries, such as Canada and Australia. Another challenge has been the changing demographics of America. There has been a steady decline in the American birth rate. This has been leading to a decrease in the traditional college age student, aged 18 to 24. The demographics of students is changing. There is a student loan debt crisis in America that makes education unaffordable and impossible for some learners. There has been a steady increase in economic inequality and we are currently in the longest American war in history. These all impact college enrollment and has led institutions to seek out non-traditional students, such as adult learners and veterans. Scarcity of resources is likely to drive competition between institutions and between departments within the campus to an even higher level than before. This has a direct impact on libraries since the library's budgets are directly tied to the institution's budget. As a result, academic libraries have the threat of budget cuts continually looming over them. At the same time, subscription costs continue to rise substantially for libraries, making it increasingly difficult for the libraries to adjust to the possibility of a reduction in budget. Libraries need to demonstrate value to campus administration in order to avoid hefty budget cuts and reductions in services and staff. Strategic plans provide a pathway forward for universities and libraries alike, presenting an opportunity to demonstrate value. Strategic planning has a long history in the military and corporations. However, it was not implemented widely in higher education in the United States until difficulties recruiting students and securing funds arose in the 1970s. Since then, strategic plans have become a requirement to be an accredited institution. For American institutions to receive accreditation, they must have a strategic plan, which has led to a consistent structure. The mission statement and vision represent the current and desired future of the institution. 
while the strategic plan is used to lead the institution to the desired future. These components are usually the same for library strategic plans. But for the department or unit plans, it is not uncommon to not include a mission statement or values. Instead, the plan usually refers to the mission and values developed at the administrative level of the libraries. In 2000, Coral outlined six reasons that libraries should develop a strategic plan, including to determine directions and priorities, identify critical issues and constraints, and to inform resource allocation and utilization. Another reason has risen in response to the enrollment difficulties and budget constraints to remain central to the institution and patrons. The traditional value propositions of libraries are being challenged by an increasing number of competitors. A strategic plan is an opportunity to define a vision for the future that aligns with the institutions and with the needs of patrons. A university's strategic plan is created with the needs of their users in mind and how the institution needs a change in order to support them. However, the goals of an institution's strategic plan cannot be achieved by campus administration alone. It takes collective commitment across the campus in order to implement change. In order to contribute towards the achievement of the institution's goals and priorities, the library or unit needs to align their strategic plan with the institutions and develop goals and priorities that would progress implementation of the plan. Aligning the library's plan with the institutions changes the focus of library staff from the library and its function to its users and their needs. This assists libraries in meeting the needs of the campus rather than being focused on internal library functions only. Libraries don't generate revenue for the campus and are at the behest of campus leadership for funding. So it is important that they can demonstrate how the library is supporting campus goals and initiatives in order to secure funding and resources. Lastly, the library is a unit of a larger institution that supports the library. And in return, the core goal of academic libraries has always been to support the mission of the university, whether through supporting faculty research and scholarship or student learning. Aligning strategic plans help serve the institution effectively. There are strategies for alignment. I will discuss three that can ensure alignment is intentional and clear. First is to map goals in the library or unit strategic plan to institutional goals and priorities. Mapping makes it clear which institutional goals the library's plan will help to advance or achieve. Second, adopting language and terminology from the institutional plan into the library's plan helps to make connections and aids campus administration in understanding the library's initiatives and services better due to shared language. Third, when possible, provide assessment data and metrics that demonstrate contribution to the institution. The environment and situation on your campus will dictate which alignment strategies are appropriate to implement and which would not work well. I will now present the UW-Madison Library's e-learning plan as a case study in institutional alignment. My position as e-learning librarian and my supervisor, the Director of Teaching and Learning, collaborate on developing e-learning plans every two years. At the same time that we began development on, on the next plan in fall 2019, our campus released five new strategic goals and initiatives associated with each. This allowed us to develop goals that aligned with the Chancellor's initiatives and advanced the library's strategic goals at the same time. The first strategy we implemented was to use the background vision section to introduce and link to the campus projects, initiatives, and plans that our plan was aligned to. We also formulated our vision statement to align with the existing library strategic plan, as well as tailored it into our program's goals with the addition of the following point. The vision of e-learning for the libraries is one that calibrates with the library's mission and vision to advance shifting campus initiatives. This demonstrates the strategy of using institutional language and terminology. The second strategy we used was to develop our goals and objectives so that they would map to and advance the institution's goals. 
To demonstrate this, we will discuss one campus initiative and how we align to it. The Chancellor's first goal was to maintain and further strengthen educational outcomes. An initiative launched in 2019 to advance this goal was to pursue online degree programs which expand access and allow us to bring a UW-Madison degree within reach for more non-traditional undergraduates. The libraries are deeply embedded in undergraduate instruction, so this was a natural fit for goal mapping. The following are the mapped e-learning goals. These goals will help to shift information literacy instruction and library services online and to be responsive and proactive to the changing campus landscape described by the Chancellor. We also use the language of online degree programs to tie it directly to the campus initiative. Completing both goal I and goal J will allow us to gather metrics to demonstrate our impact on student learning and success within the online undergraduate degree programs. These metrics can be used by library leadership when discussing allocation of resources and potential increases in budget or positions that may be needed for the libraries to continue to support the growth of online learning programs. Here are the lessons we learned from this process. This alignment process expanded the amount of stakeholders that were consulted and lengthened the time for gathering feedback and negotiation. To adjust for this, more time needs to be built into the planning and feedback phase of developing our next plan. The second lesson learned was that goals set at an institution may be moving targets due to the significant challenges higher education is experiencing. If a goal you map to has been changed or put on hold, you will have to be flexible and embrace a culture of experimentation and innovation, which allows rapid development and change. Our final lesson learned is to share your plan with key campus stakeholders so that they are aware of your priorities and are able to identify connections between their own work and yours. Our campus is very decentralized, which can cause work to become siloed and can lead to the duplication of work across campus. So it was a success for us to be able to communicate our intentions and find the best pathways for collaboration. To conclude this presentation, Libraries and higher education are going through a period of unexpected challenges, as well as the continuing changing of trends that have been in place for the last decade. It can be difficult to try and look ahead when even a month forward is so unpredictable. However, referring to your institution's mission and your organizational goals is the best way to remain focused with a future-oriented mindset. With the potential for budget cuts, it will be more important than ever moving forward to be able to exhibit how your library or unit is contributing and adding value to the institution. Здравствуйте, я Рейса Ленцвела. Я со своими коллегами из Университета Центральной Филиппин. Uh, ito Professor Maria Cynthia Pilinia e Professor Anna May Cantel. Today we're going to share about uh, part of our study in a paper on developing competency index for librarian benchmark for capacity building, LAS education, and continuing professional development. Each of us are going to share a part of uh, the discussion and um, without much further ado, I'm giving the floor to Professor Pilinia. The background in rationale of our study, the demand for librarians' competence to address the needs of the modern institution in the growing transformation in the society serve as an impetus to continue evaluate the needs of the profession. According to Georgie 2020, the factors that determine the career of librarians in the future, the employers, for example, libraries, enterprises, and other institutions. The field of work, for example, the management, indexing, information, research, and the skills, example, the pedagogical, education, cultural, and social skills, language proficiency. 
the competencies metrics around the world according to ALA, ACRL, and OCLC, CLIP, and LIANSA, and many others organizations have developed an index that will guide educators and employers on what to expect from the in information professionals. The Philippines has an established competency index primarily based on ALA, ACRL, and OCLC standards. A couple of libraries continue to hold training for VLA members and other library staff in collaboration with the University of South Pacific Emelos Campus and Reserve Bank of Vanuatu. The training usually happens in Fort Vela and in Espiritu Santo, Espiritu Santo for academic libraries and USP spearheads the training, while the school libraries, the National Library of Vanuatu, conducts training in remote areas. In 2015, Margaret Terry, a librarian at the public library, now the director of the National Library of Vanuatu, participated in the second cohort of the Nili Oceana program, which was supported by Bell and Melinda Foundation. The program ran for three years until it ended in 2018. Considering that Vanuatu emphasizes the preservation of culture, culture and indigenous knowledge as embodied in the country's people plan, Pillar 4, and vibrant cultural identity. This emphasizes a unique framework with identification and research, knowledge sharing, and preservation. So this is the picture of theological librarians in Southeast Asia. Theological librarians in Southeast Asia. This initiative was pursued due to lack of localized or regional, regionalized framework for assessing the current skills. Theological librarians in Southeast Asia have developed diversely. Countries like Hong Kong and Taiwan have integrated better ICT component. Standard library practices is also more established in the Philippines, Thailand, Indonesia, while the Myanmar is still in the process of developing. In most cases, the scale development of librarians is done through library association in LIS schools. In the case of Myanmar, this is not fully implemented due to a certain limitations. However, bigger association like Etesea and American Theological Library Association are the main steers for developing competencies. Competency index is needed to measure the knowledge and skills of librarians. Major countries like US, UK, Europe, in some countries in Asia Pacific, such as India, Philippines, Thailand, Australia, and New Zealand. New Zealand have existing standards. Sharing the process and how the competency index has recently been established in selected countries in Asia Pacific provided insight on how the same can be done by countries where a competency index has not yet available. Cognizant to these gaps in needs, the researchers embark on researches to develop competency indexes. So the research objectives are the following. Identify the common competencies in various standards. And then second, determine the level of competence of the librarians as perceived by respondents. And the last is to share the processes undergone to develop a competency index. For the methodology of our study, we use MEX method in several data collection techniques and strategies, like documentary analysis, survey, and group focus discussion. For a documentary analysis, both Benuato and TLA, TLSA or Theological Library Association uh, competency index began with documentary analysis by comparing various competency indexes of the library association around the world. Lastly, the draft of the competency index was made based on the established standard with additional input from the expert in the specific items, them important to be added. Upon completion of the proposed competency index, it is transformed into a questionnaire that was distributed in a form of survey. 
survey. The second phase is a survey answered by librarians in a respective groups. This is a way to determine the perception of librarians on their current skills, as well as an avenue to ask librarians if there are other skills they needed that was not included. So the focus group discussion. In Vanuatu, the project of developing the competency index for librarian started in October 2018 and finalized in March 2019. A call for participation was sent and the first meeting was set in the last quarter of 2018. The librarians representing the National Library, Academic and School Library, and a special libraries gathered to discuss the different competency indexes all over the world. From the said meeting, the first draft of the competency index was made. For TLSA, the research project in collaboration with the Association of Theological Education in Southeast Asia, or ATSEA, developed the competency index as part of the bigger initiative was started in Janu January 2020. It was started with a review of various library standards and then a questionnaire was drafted by LIS professors. This was content validated by three experts in the field in April 2020. It was sent via, via email to all theological librarians in Southeast Asia based on the email list by the ATCA office. Feedback from theological librarians is summarized in more online group discussions will be made instead of focus group discussion in the conference for theological librarians in Southeast Asia. This is initially planned to be conducted face-to-face -face in April 2020, but due to the pandemic, the method is modified. The online focus group discussion, it is going to be done during the TLSA web conference. Let me present the uh, findings of research objectives one and two. The competency on core technology, application of information and communication technologies, managing information tools and technologies, and information and knowledge systems and technology are the most common among those identified as the professional competency of a librarian. These aligns the profession in the realm of information gateway using various technological tools. Personal competencies common among the associations are about management skills. Example is managing library resources, services, personnel, and collection. This area of competency has extensive scope in defining the personal and or essential competency of a library. Furthermore, among the associations, only the competencies from competency index for the library field was able to provide a more comprehensive and detailed competency guide covering four categories, while special libraries association identified only one category, and that is the core competencies of a special librarian. In addition, two out of the four associations mentioned a competency on research and data analysis. Comparing these library associations' competencies provided the researchers a baseline data in drafting appropriate competency standards suggestive of the roles and responsibilities of a theological librarians without compromising the uniqueness of the nature of their services and resources. Furthermore, let me present to you the result of uh, the Ni Vanuatu Librarians perceived a level of importance of specific competencies. Among the items, the one which were noted as highly important was on library collection management competencies, specifically focusing on collection development with 86.9%. Furthermore, um, second on the list is on ethics under personal and interpersonal competencies. And the one which has the list or the less important among these items was on technological competencies, covering computer operating system functions, software application, and web technologies. Comparing now the result of the logical librarians perceived level of importance of specific competencies, it was noted that they had a highly important competency on professional knowledge, specifically on the area of cataloging. And it was noted that they have this less important competency on the core technology competencies, specifically on public access technology. 
to address the last objectives of this paper, I am sharing insights on how we develop this competency. From the two separate surveys, we came up with uh, these common steps. Uh, the first is a review of various standards. Before we embarked on creating list of competencies, various models were looked into. In Vanuatu, we even um, uh, looked into the laws and plans in the country, um, which were included in the review. The second part is the drafting of competencies. Um, we solicited the advice of experts uh, and officers of associations um, in the development of the draft of these competencies. In case of Vanuatu, representatives from various libraries met to discuss. Four theological librarians, a group of faculty met and we also run this um, list of competencies uh, as a draft to various experts from librarians and LIS educators in um, different countries in Southeast Asia. Um, as to the third uh, step, we did a distribution of the survey. Um, we sent to all the members um, the questions uh, or, or the competency, the list of competencies that we have to gather their uh, perception as what Professor Cantel has uh, shown a while ago. And from there, we also gathered additional competencies that they thought would be needed. And last but not the least, we did a focus group discussion wherein um, we consulted them the second time on how these competencies are to be uh, added or included in their final um, standard competency. Um, also, this competency index can be useful as a reference or basis for capacity building, as we have uh, always been emphasizing. So we suggest a simple step as uh, has been done in the previous and in other uh, library associations around the world. So one is a, a perceptive survey and or peer assessment before the training is designed to determine the needs. And second, the same competency index survey to be answered by the same group after the capacity building program has been conducted to see how effective is the uh, capacity building initiative that has been done. In terms of uh, LIS education, um, we have illustrated a very simple uh, um, presentation on how this uh, the LIS education continuing professional development can benefit from a framework or established framework on competency index. For formal educational setting, the competency index can be a basis for constructing the core knowledge needed and the skills matrix for it to identify the gap in the current competencies. By looking into the skills of practicing librarians and addressing uh, those areas which need to be developed or extended, the continuing professional development program can be more responsive. Um, the baseline data on the competencies can be used as well to enhance the curriculum, as we mentioned. LIS curricularists, as we provided in our uh, literature review, have shown or advised that the course content should be derived from a systematic process of identifying the needs. First hand data from those who are working in very useful is very useful to identify the gap between the current st status and the desired competencies. So um, from this uh, uh, findings, we have this conclusion. So one, um, the competency indexes from these two groups are different, are really distinct. That they, as we have uh, seen in the table um, in the previous slides, each organization deemed that they have different emphasis on in terms of competencies. The second, the value of a unique competency index is confirmed in both studies. It ensures that we are not measuring librarians' competence using one common standard that tends to be too Western. And for our recommendation, a survey using this competency index can be used to analyze the gap in the curriculum. It can also be utilized to measure the skills and knowledge of librarians to see which areas need to be given a attention in continuing professional development. Further studies on how the, this competency index contribute to continuing professional development would also be very interesting. And lastly, future discussions on how the steps are replicated or applied in subject countries or beyond 
could be Central Asia or Kazakhstan, which it could also be a good initiative and we would be interested uh, and really to have some uh, collaboration. And so this ends our presentation. Spasiba Bolshoi, Dobritin.